silent within their underground silos. These intercontinental ballistic missiles have kept America secure for two decades. Only a direct hit will penetrate the reinforced concrete which protects these Minuteman and Titan missiles from enemy warheads. But enemy ICBMs are becoming just that accurate. Their warheads are now able to destroy a significant portion of our strategic missiles in their silos. The ballistic missile's deterrent will become a thing of the past. I'm Major Bill Flapper of the Ballistic Missile Office. We're developing a new strategic missile system that will help maintain our nuclear deterrent into the 21st century. It's based on the old shell game, but with much higher stakes. The name of the game is MX. Its object to hide our newest ICBMs from the enemy, ensuring their survivability. The enemy will know where a missile could be, just as we know where the P could be, but not where it is for sure. Instead of three shells, each MX missile will be hidden in any one of 23 protective shelters. Clearly, no enemy will risk a one-shot guess when the stakes are national survival. So to be sure of destroying that one missile and its 10 deadly warheads, an attacker will have to destroy all of its shelters. That means a minimum of 23 of their most accurate warheads to destroy only one missile. And the MX force will have 200 missiles. If they build more warheads, we can build more shelters at a lower cost to keep our advantage. If we have to, we can add an anti-ballistic missile system to defend MX. This would force the enemy to aim several of their warheads at each shelter to guarantee its destruction. That's the MX concept. Mobility and concealment are the key words. With them, the cost of an all-out attack will be so high that no adversary can afford to try. The engineering required to make the MX a reality is truly staggering. I'm Major Bill Jacobs, commander of the MX Engineering Test Bed near Mercury, Nevada. Moving and hiding missiles poses some difficult problems. We're using this early version of the MX transporter to try and solve some of those problems. It's the world's largest rubber-tired vehicle, and its size gives you some idea of the magnitude of the project. MX won't be fully operational until 1989, but this is how it will work. The MX force will be based in broad desert valleys in the southwest, far from any large cities. The 23 protective shelters for each missile will be spaced along an access road so that no enemy warhead could destroy more than one. A transporter vehicle will move the missile from shelter to shelter. The missile will be placed in one of the shelters while a dummy missile takes its place in the transporter. It will be impossible for enemy spy satellites or ground observers to tell where the missile really is. This process will be repeated periodically. Because it's mobile, the missile can be moved quickly if we ever suspect that its location is known. When needed, the MX mobile launcher will move out of the shelter door and launch its missile. Work on the project has already begun. While engineers perfect missile components and technicians test model shelters, while rocket engines roar in the night, a small number of specialists are already working in the valleys that will hold MX. Archaeologists combing proposed missile sites to preserve Indian relics. Biologists studying the effects of MX on wildlife. Geologists, hydrologists, surveyors. Every effort is being made to minimize the impact of MX on the environment. And while the shelters will be spread over a large area, only 25 square nautical miles will actually contain MX facilities. The rest of the land will remain open for mining, ranching, and recreation. That's the MX program. It's a variation of the old shell game, but it's no game of chance. It's a calculated program to preserve America's security by making an attack on our ICBM force unthinkable. As long as any enemy is unwilling to attack 200 missiles hidden among 4,600 shelters, MX will be doing its job. 